Can you hear me? Well, welcome again to High Country Cowboy Church. It's a great Sunday. Oh my goodness. Drum roll, please. Ah, I love seeing all of you, man. This is awesome. New faces. And uh, it's going to be a good day. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> um, first thing I want to mention is uh, if you haven't seen these two guitars, we're doing a raffle for our new place to, to help add money to it. Um, they're not doing so well, so I'm kind of boosted, trying to boost it up today. Um, it is actually our last day here at church, but they can, they can be bought before Christmas Eve, because Christmas Eve is when the drawing is going to get drawn. Um, they're $10 a piece. Um, right now, we only have about $900 in tickets sold. So I was just kind of hoping to get uh, more it's for our new property or the church. So the more we make, the better we can do, right? Um, although Jesus pr provides. I never worry about that. So anyway, if, if these will be up there, if you take a look at them, if you're interested, they're guitars signed by uh, Ted Nugent. So if that interests you at all, um, they're kind of taking a lot to, to pull them out of my hand, but for, for God, I'll do anything. So, um, anyway, uh, let's see. We have potluck, so uh, if you brought something, that's awesome. If you haven't, that's awesome too. As long as you brought your appetite, please stick around. Um, fill your stomachs. Um, and uh, and the best part about it is is uh, fellowship. You know, we get to know each other, get to talk to each other, um, and uh, it's just an awesome time. Um, I haven't didn't make out the, the deal this time, so I'm not sure. I had to take a quite look at what was all on it. Um, <clears throat> but I believe we're uh, okay. We're uh, starting the round pen. Okay, um, the round pen, which is Bible study on uh, on Wednesday. We're starting it back up on uh, January fifth. And I believe it's going to be at uh, Steve's house, Pastor Steve's. Um, and uh, we have a new production team leader, GT. If you have any interest in being part of that, uh, see him. Um, and I am the uh, wagon master, I guess you could call me the, for, the, <laughs> for the chuck wagon. Uh, that puts all this, well, try to put all of it together. I have a, a lovely assistant, my wife, and I'm, that I'm so <laughs> grateful for. And everybody that brings uh, food, it's greatly appreciated. You know, God bless you all. Um, anyway, I think that's, uh, oh, oh, phones, I need, GT just reminded me. He's communications as well, I think. Um, if you could turn them down, I need to turn mine down. And um, we don't pass the plate. Um, if you do know, if you don't know, we don't pass the plate. And uh, we have this little milk can over here that uh, whatever God puts on your heart is uh, greatly, greatly appreciated. So uh, let's go to prayer. Thank you. Gracious Heavenly Father, we, uh, we are so overwhelmed about, by the sacrifice that you've made for giving us your son, Jesus. It's just, uh, it's just you can't even come up with words. Um, it is that time of the year that we celebrate your son's birth. Well, soon it'll be the time of the year we celebrate his death, his rising, and um, and the gift that uh, he has given to us to be with him for, for
forever. We love you. We, um, we just ask for strength, humility, and um, understanding, not only of your word, obviously that, but of each other. As we pass each other, we, um, we just ask that uh, you give us a heart to accept what we don't feel we need to, we want to, but uh, we should. We, uh, we pray that you never let a moment pass us that we can help someone, that we can be a good neighbor, that we can love someone. That's what this church, that's what your, your children are all about. And um, we just asked for a great sermon today. We, we asked to get Steve out of the way and obviously and let you talk through him. And uh, I'm just so grateful for this church and, and, and your, your love in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please rise. We're going to sing some of our favorite songs as we welcome in Christmas week. Our first song is O Come All You Faithful. Please join in. Jesus to thee. 
sound good. Hey, we're going to sing Away in a Manger. Imagining that stony bed. The smells of a manger in the stable. Amazing. The animals were lucky. <laughs> Away in a manger, no crib for a crib. A little Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus. Asleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing, the baby no waits. The little Lord Jesus, the crying he makes. I love the Lord Jesus, look down.
month now in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the descendants of David and the virgin's name was Mary and coming in he said to her greetings favored one the Lord is with you but she was very perplexed at this statement 
and kept pondering what kind of salutation this was. The angel then said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. For behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. Lord, we want to pause. I'm going to pause for a moment and ask that you would bless this service. Bless this service in a way that only you can. Today, as we reflect back on that great day, we're going to do so from a perspective that perhaps most of us have never thought of. But I pray that what we're about to discover will only draw us closer to you. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. In Matthew's account, in Matthew chapter 1, again in verse 18, now this, this is the birth of, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows, when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they had come together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will, she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all of this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophets. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. You know, there's a lot of different presentations of this season going on right now. How many of us love Christmas and love the Christmas season? Yeah. Most of us do, but I want you to know there are some people that this is the hardest time of the year for them. You understand that, right? Yeah. Maybe they're struggling with a loss. Maybe they're struggling just financially. Maybe they're just struggling with life. You know how life just, it can really get us down, can it not? And sometimes we just think we're so overwhelmed that we just don't know how we're going to get to the next day or to the next spot. But somehow, God sees us through, right? Yeah. Christmas is a beautiful, magical time of the year. But Christmas is only what you make Christmas to be. You understand that, right? Christmas can be old bah humbug. Or it can be just like sugar canes and... Uh, presents and just all kinds of awesomeness, right? We got to witness a little Christmas spirit yesterday, a few of us. Because one of our sisters had a need. Needed to have something done and, 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 and work got out quickly and many of you showed up and helped and she's extremely grateful for what you did and I'm extremely grateful for you. I've titled this morning's lesson, The Gift. I put this gift up here to use as an illustration. Y'all are probably freaking out wondering what this is. Just give this boy a microphone and a drum set. Like, look out, baby! A rump a bump boom woo! Right? My wife hates me, I want you to know. You know how I woke her up this morning? At 6 a.m. She said, get me up at 6. I want to get up at 6. <laughs> right. It's like wait, waking Satan up out of a deep sleep at 6. <laughs> oh, I want to get up at 6. I got to get up. I got to, you know, I got to drink coffee, fix my hair, you know, all that stuff. Right. I said, do you, I love you, baby. I used to, she, said, she said, I said, can I wake you up by whatever means possible? Woo! You know what she said? No. Yes. <laughs> you know, that was a very, very, very dangerous thing to say to me, right? Especially, 
we might have a drum. <laughs> <laughs> so I got up at four like a dude. I was excited. I didn't hardly want to go to bed last night. I was so excited. I discovered some things in preparation for today's message that I probably overlooked myself. And it's just not because I was wild. I was ready to pray. Y'all should have come last night because I probably would have done a better job last night. But I was ready last night, laying there awake, one eye open. What time is it going? Did you get up yet? Finally get up. So at 6 a.m., woo, 6 a.m., love 6 a.m. I walk into her room, our room. Yeah, we have separate rooms. Though. I walk into our room. You were like that old married couple, like, ooh, whatever. My grandparents. I walk into her room. And you know what I did, right? I did a little bug under the covers. Till I got a hold of her and I went, a rum -bum -bum -bum, and I yarded the covers off her. That didn't go real well. <laughs> but it sure was funny for just a split second. <laughs> and then she wouldn't get out. She just like laying around like bacon frying in the pans. No, 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 you said get up at six. And six were getting up. And so I kept doing the rump a bump bump and then GT, guess what? I failed that Tracy, I failed that song we were trying to find yesterday. The oh, drum one about Oh yeah, it's a good one. I turned it up. You could have heard it at the Nate. Well she kinda helped find it. She found it really good. I'll take her. Out of it. I don't know why she would do that to me, but she did. I had it turned up so loud in our house, I think the neighbors would have heard it this morning. I mean, can you imagine? Now I'm jumping ahead of myself, but so Mary has this little boy, Jesus, our Savior, the Messiah, and if y'all have had kids, right? And sometimes they get a little restless, and it's time to get them, you need to get them a nap, right? So they can rest up. So she finally gets Jesus into nap time, and some goober comes up with a great idea. I know what we need. A drum roll about the little drummer boy, right? I probably didn't go over real well then either. It didn't go over real well this morning. But Christmas is a magical time. It's what you make it. It really is. It's about your perception. It's really all about Jesus. But your take on Christmas can be a very exciting, positive thing. Or it can be a bah humbug, the Grinch stole Christmas kind of thing, right? I want to help you see that I don't want you to leave today not being wound up like a three dollar clock being excited for Christmas because I'm going to share something from a perspective you might not have seen that hopefully will cause all of us to get even more excited so excited that we can probably hunt ducks with a rake we're going to be flying so high when we leave here today it's going to be awesome so we're talking about Christmas we're talking about the gift but before we actually get to that point, we kind of just kind of back up for just a minute and we got to just put a little bit of light on what I just read. And both of those accounts, if you're wondering where they were, the first one was in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 31, and the second one was in Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Now we all know that Jesus was born of Mary, right? Who didn't know that? We've learned that from a very young age. The really interesting thing, we read it, Mary was a virgin. Mary was engaged to Joseph to be married, and all of a sudden, the, the God spoke to her and said and called her favored one. Do you know how awesome that is? Would you not like for God to refer to you as the favored one? I would. The favored man, that is a that's awesome. So he refers to her as the favored one. She's engaged to Joseph. She's still a virgin. God chose her to be the favored one, and she conceived by the Holy, was conceived by the Holy Spirit. The really cool thing about Mary is you realize Mary never left Jesus' side from the time of his birth to the time of his death. Let that sink in for just a minute. Mary never left the side. She was there at the birth. She was there at the death. That's, that's a mother's love that cannot, I, I can't comprehend that, okay? I'm not a mother, don't go figure. I can't comprehend that, what that love must have been. Now let's look at Joseph on the other side. So now here you have a, a, a man that's, that's engaged to his fiance, and he's all excited. They're about to start a new life together. And uh, all of a sudden, Mary comes up pregnant. 
Now, the human side of us guys would be, oh, that's great, awesome, right? I hardly doubt it. I hardly doubt that any of us would go, oh, that's great, gonna take the feller to dinner. No. But here's what we know about Joseph. The text says that Joseph was a righteous man. Man, men, do you not want to be known as a righteous man? Yeah. That, I mean, the fact that he would refer to Mary as the favored one, but he refers to Joseph as the righteous man. That is a great, great uh, explanation of who Joseph was. Now, Joseph could have, by Jewish law, and he was within his rights to do so, could have had Mary uh, put to death for what she did. You understand that, right? And now we see how true Joseph's character really was because as an angel, as God came to him and said, take her as your wife, he did. But he also, we read, or we'll read, that he kept, he kept her, her uh, uh, he never consummated the marriage. That's the easy way to explain that. And so she was still a virgin even at the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we see then Jesus being born. He was born in a stable, as we know. Maybe not the stable as you might have think, like a barn sitting next to a house kind of stable. I'll explain that in just a minute. But nonetheless, our Savior was born in a stable. We, just undeniable, we read it in Scripture. He's born in a stable. He's placed in a manger. There's animals. There's hay. There's, it's, man, how cool. Who doesn't like spend time in the barn, right? Yeah. Who doesn't like, now, some of you are going to go, eh. <laughs> there's a good smell about manure. I love it. I walk in and go, mm. That ain't popcorn, but it sure does smell good. <laughs> right? Some of you know that one. <laughs> I love it. I just love the smell of animals. I love this church because the doggies are coming more. The doggos are coming. It's awesome because we're a church. We're a body of believers that are all caught up in just being blue hairs on the front row or stuff shirts or whatever you want to think of them as we're a body of believers that actually live what we believe do we not Amen. we do what we say we say what we do that's what jesus wants us to be that's what this gift i've titled it the gift you're going to see that jesus is the greatest gift and so jesus born in place in a stable now go with me to luke chapter 2 verse 1 this is how it played out in that day now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census to, should be taken of all the inhabitants of earth. And this was the first census taken while Carus was governor of Syria and everyone was on his way to register for the census each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee from the city of Nazareth to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and family of David. In order that he might register along with Mary, who, was engaged, who he was engaged to and was with child. And while they were there, the days of her com were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in, cl in, cl in cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were some shepherds. Today I want to, I want to help you to see how awesome I mean, I was just wound up, just crazy, crazy. The more I got into, the more wound up I got. I want to present what I'm presenting today through the eyes of those shepherds. Now, we all know the Christmas story, right? How many of us maybe worked or have been in a, in a Christmas play? Maybe you were baby Jesus lying in the manger. Maybe you were one of the, the wise men. Maybe you were, were uh, uh, some of the shepherds. Maybe you were just a donkey standing in the background. I don't know what you were. But we all know that 
nativity scene well, but have you ever thought about it from the eyes of the shepherds? Because God first revealed this birth of Jesus to the shepherds first. Now, when we think of shepherds, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what the world says shepherds are, then I'm going to help you see who these shepherds were. This ought to wake you up. Shepherds in that day were considered the low life of society. They were uneducated. They were dirty. They were smelly. They were the least paid. They were the uneducated. In fact, a shepherd couldn't even testify in court under Jewish law because they were considered to be unreliable. I mean, you think of the worst, the lowest of low, that was a shepherd. And you think to yourself, well, that's awesome because God revealed Jesus to the, the very least of us. There's some yes in that and there's some no in that. But Jesus came to the, or God through an angel came to the shepherd first. Look what it says, verse eight. And in the same reason, there were some shepherds. How many shepherds? We don't really know. Maybe a couple of good sheep dog too, maybe, huh? Don't know that either, right? But we know there were shepherds. And it says that, he, that, that in the same reason, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. You see, the shepherds were there 24 seven. They never left their sheep because they were not only there to care for them, they were there to protect them. Protect them from what? Predators. Protect them from, from elements. Protect them from whatever might happen to those sheep. Those shepherds never left their sheep. Starting to see a little tracking here with our Lord and Savior as he gets a little bigger. They never left the flock. They were there 24 seven. And it says there that they were, and it was night. Now they didn't have street lights and lights of town like we have, right? It's night. It's probably really dark, except for maybe the stars. Maybe the moon was out, but we know there's a special star that appeared that night for sure. And it says that they were keeping watch in the fields by night, verse nine, and an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them. Now, I don't know about you, but put yourself, be a shepherd for a minute. You're out in the field. You're by yourself with your other buddy shepherds and you're having shepherd talk. And I don't know what shepherds talked about, but I'm sure they had some sort of discussion. And all of a sudden, voila, an angel appears. What do you think you're gonna do? They, it says they were afraid. And not, it wasn't just one angel. Look what happens. An angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them. He didn't just appear. It was all of a sudden, boom, I'm right there. Now, I've shared with some of you my dark story. I'm not afraid of the dark. I'm not afraid of nothing. I especially am not afraid of the dark because I refuse to watch them spook shows that make me afraid of the dark, right? I won't do it. I call them devil shows. I'm not putting that crap in my head. I got enough stuff in my head. I don't need to put that in there. But I had, Karen and I had a property in East Texas. And it was way out in the country. And I had to go out there one day to check something. And there's, it's just an empty house. Nobody lives there. We had bought it to fix it up to flip it. And this was one of those nights. I mean, it was so dark. It was so dark you couldn't see the hood of your pickup if you were sitting in it. And I kind of, and I knew I had to get out of the pickup because you can't drive in there because of the lock gate. And I had to get through the gate and walk up to the, and I, I'm trying to think back why I would even want to go out there in the dark. But I did. For some reason, I felt I needed to go out there in the dark. I've got my sorry dogs with me. Now, if you know me, I always have dogs with me. This night, these dogs were extremely sorry. Like the worst sorry dog you could ever think of. Because I get out of the truck I navigate through the gate, and, I, and, I, and I'm remembering in my head, okay, the driveway goes down here ways, turns to the right, and I'm walking up there. And I literally ran into somebody. I mean, face to face, bolt our head close, ran into somebody. It was a black man who had been camping at our property, and I didn't know it. And he didn't know I was there. 
and I didn't know he was there. But when we ran into each other, it was a it was a thank you Jesus moment. I want you to know because he said, I mean, he screamed. He screamed. He said, "Oh Jesus!" I said, "Yes, my son." <laughs> it scared him as much as just, now. It's, that's dark, right? And I mean, I ran in. I mean, I ran into him. These shepherds are in the field, and all of a sudden, boom, there's an angel, right? Now, did this angel have lighter? I don't know. I all, all they know that it was probably a really, really cool moment, right? Really cool moment. Now, it says here that the angel said, <clears throat> said to him, do not, said to them, do not be afraid to hold. Here's, here's really cool. I, this angel, says, I come. I bring you good news of great joy. Don't you see how cool this is? The angel went to the shepherds in the field before he went to anybody else. And it wasn't just one angel. Look what it says. Verse 13 says, And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts. A multitude of angels. Do you think that was a cool moment? That was a really cool moment. And these angels were praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace among men with whom he is pleased. And when the angels had gone, the, the, the shepherds talked among themselves and said, Let us go right now. And they ran to see this Jesus. But in verse 12, the angels had said to these shepherds, Today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you that you will find this baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. They were in awe and they ran straight to Bethlehem. And when they got there, they ran and they found Mary and Joseph, verse 16. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. And when they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told to them about this Christ. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary, it says, treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. And as the shepherds left, verse 20, they went back glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and all that they had heard. Now let me help you see it through their eyes. I'm sure there's somebody in here who's never seen it from this perspective. And I have to admit, I hadn't seen it from this perspective like I discovered it myself. And so this is as awesome, awesomeness to me as I hope it's going to be for you. These shepherds weren't your typical shepherds. Shepherds of that day, I told you, were nobodies. They were out in the field. They were the outcasts. They were the uneducated. Uneducated meaning they couldn't even read. They couldn't read the scripture. The only thing they knew about scripture is what was told to them. Because, of course, they're the lowest of society, right? But I had to dig a little deeper. And as I dug a little deeper, I wanted to know more about these shepherds. And there is a document, there are documents, they're referred to as the Mishnah. And what they are, are they, they are the oral uh, documentation of the oral traditions of that day govern, that govern the Jewish people during the time of the Pharisees. Now here's what I discovered. I had to dig a little for this one. In those, in that Mishnah, and in those oracles, it was ex explicitly forbidden for any flock to be anywhere in the land of Israel. They were actually in the wilderness. Now I don't know at what point wilderness started, and wilderness began or stopped and ended, but we know from the Mishnah that these 
shepherds were not your typical shepherds. These sheep were not your typical sheep. Because we know from reading the text that they were right there outside the town of Bethlehem. Now here's a mind, here's a mind twister. Do you know what Bethlehem really means? Bethlehem means bread of life. Think about that. Jesus, who later will be referred to as the bread of life, is born in the town called the bread of life. Is that awesome? Let me read something even, even cooler. I think I have it right here. I can get to it quick. In John chapter 6, verse 32 and 33, it says this. Moses did not give you bread out of heaven. He's talking to the people there. He says, Moses did not give you bread out of heaven. It was my father. This is Jesus speaking here. Jesus says, it was my father who gives you the true bread out of heaven. Now, he's not talking about business. He's talking about himself. It's my father who gives you the true bread. You can go to the store and get bread. But God gives the true bread, which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. Is that cool? Yeah. Verse 35, Jesus then will say, I am the bread of life. You see how cool this is all unfolding? Jesus is born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem is referred to as, 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 as the bread, the, um, the bread of life. And Jesus, Jesus himself is born there. The house of bread is what I meant to say. And Jesus will call himself the bread of life. Now, let's go a little deeper. So if these shepherds weren't normal shepherds, and these sheep weren't normal sheep, what were they? And who were they? Because the, the, the real shepherds, well, they're all real shepherds, but the shepherds that we think of as we think about the Christmas story, we think about shepherds, we think about people who care for sheep. But we find from the Mishnah that those sheep couldn't be anywhere near that town. Nowhere even close. They had to be out in the wilderness. So who were these shepherds? And what were these sheep? These particular shepherds were also dirty. These particular shepherds lived in the fields with their sheep to protect and to care for and to allow nothing to take place. You see, Bethlehem was only five miles from Jerusalem. What takes place in Jerusalem? What's in Jerusalem? The temple, right? These shepherds were actually temple priests. Now, I know some of you are going, boy, I've never heard that before. I have to agree with you. I dig a little deep myself. These shepherds were actually temple priests, and those sheep were actually sheep that were being cared for to be used at a later date for temple sacrifice. Under Jewish law, they had to go to the temple in Jerusalem and do what? Give animal sacrifice. The animals that they sacrificed had to be with no blemish. They had to be pure. They had to be clean. They had to, they had, in order for that to happen, anyone here ever raise sheep? It, it takes a lot to keep a sheep, a lamb alive when they're born, keep them alive. It's even harder to keep them clean. These Men, these shepherds, were actually fulfilling temple duty I love that. by being out there with their flock. And it gets cooler. Hang on here. It's going, woo, it's going to fly now, baby. So it's dark. It's dark. And there's a powerful message here that I, I don't want us to miss. And it's going to bring great light to this whole Christmas season for all of us. It's dark, they were alone, and out of nowhere, the angel appeared, and a multitude of angels came with them, and he said, I come this day for you. The angel came to the, the priest. Remember, we're under Jewish law. Jesus hasn't, Jesus is now just now being born. Jesus hasn't raised, Jesus hasn't, hasn't lived his earthly ministry. Jesus hasn't been crucified. Jesus hasn't been put in a tomb. Jesus hasn't been resurrected. We're still under Mosaic law. So to understand this Christmas season, you got to go back to Mosaic law. You got to go back to Jewish culture. You got to go back to where it was to really concept it, right? So these priests are out there caring for these lambs, these sheep, 
to later to be used for animal sacrifice, to be used um, for temple service. And that's what's taking place right here. Now, it gets even cooler. We read a minute ago that the angel came to the shepherds and they went because Mary gave birth to Jesus. Now I want you to see something you might never saw. We read there that Mary wrapped Jesus in clothes and laid him in a manger. Those weren't typical clothes. Some translations, and if you go back to the Hebrew and to the Greek, you're going to find that the proper wording there, it's amazing how a slight miss word can change a whole meaning. The meaning here is called swaddling clothes. Have you heard that term? Do you understand what swaddling clothes are? Do you understand why we put clothes around babies to swaddle them? Right? These clothes that Mary put around Jesus that day were the very swaddling clothes that these shepherds, who more than likely were priests, would put around these lambs to keep them clean, to keep them protected, to get them in preparation to be sacrificed. Now, that don't get your fire going, I don't know what will. Our Savior, Jesus, from the day he was born, was wrapped in sacrificial clothes for a preparation that would happen 33 years, 30 some years later. Is that amazing? God had a plan, did he not? From the very day and the purpose that Jesus was born, it was for us. It was a gift. It was the greatest gift that you could ever get. And it was all planned. Every part of it, every aspect of it, right down to the sacrificial clothes that were put around our Savior Jesus and placed in a manger. I find that to be extremely deep. I find that to be extremely exciting to know that, that Jesus, from the day of his birth, even from the conception, remember back, let's back up even, who else was of child about that time? Elizabeth. Do you really, because some are going to say, well, where did them, them swaddling clothes come from to get from the temple to the... Lord. Well, think about it. It says that when the time, when the time of completion, Mary and Joseph were already in Bethlehem for a few days before this happened. And guess who else lives there? Elizabeth. Guess who Elizabeth's married to? Zachariah. Guess who Zachariah is? A temple priest. Voila. Maybe, and this is all pure speculation. Maybe Elizabeth gave Mary these clothes so that at the time of birth, she would have them. I know without a doubt, God put those clothes and put Elizabeth, put Zechariah, put Mary, and all is part of God's plan. God made that happen. God made it happen when, when he conceived Mary of the Holy Spirit, right? It's all part of God's plan. It's all part of our salvation. It's all part of the greatest gift that we could ever have or understand. So as Jesus is wrapped in these swaddling cloths that was to keep the lambs clean, free of blemish, as lambs prepared for sacrifice. Do you realize in John chapter 1, verse 29? There it refers to Jesus as the Lamb of God. You think that's coincidence? Mm -mm. God had a plan. When sin, when sin entered this world, there was only one way for us to ever get back to be with God. Under Jewish law, they had to go to the temple every year and give animal sacrifice. But it wasn't enough to cleanse us. It wasn't enough to protect us. It wasn't enough to forgive our sins. And so it had to go every year. Annually. 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 Until Jesus. Until Jesus. The perfect lamb. The lamb of God. Completely flawless. Completely without blemish. Completely without sin. A gift. You don't see that as the greatest gift that's ever been given to mankind? Yeah. Jesus is the greatest gift 
that has ever been given at any time for any purpose because every one of us here today, we would be nothing. We would be absolutely nothing if it weren't for Jesus. You understand that, right? Does that not get you excited? Does that not put a different a different thought on what the Christmas season's all about? Because in the world, we get all caught up in the secular. Man, I'm going to get me a present. I'm going to put some really cool wrapping on it, maybe a cool bow. And I'm going to put it on a tree for myself so I get something. <laughs> in the world, it's about this. In the world... It's about getting old chubby finger. In the world, it's about me. Me, 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 me. In the word of God, it's about you. It's about Jesus. And there's not one of us sitting here today that could ever get to be with God in heaven without Jesus. Jesus said in John 14 6 that I am the way the truth and the life and no one comes to the father except through me Amen. Had Jesus never come had Jesus never born been born uh, uh, Like he was had Jesus never been wrapped in swallowing clothes had Jesus never been wrapped in <laughs> Sacrificial clothes Had Jesus never been put in the manger We would all still be going to the temple mm. Take me an old goat and sheep and a chicken and go to the table. Because I'm going to have to do it again next week. We don't have to do that. You understand that, right? Amen. Jesus died one time for all men for a lifetime. We do not have to go to the temple. You know where we go? We go to God. We go to Jesus. God gave us this. But so often, we take this, we put it underneath here, and we never get into it until we need something. It's like going to a vending machine. Heard me say that last week. You don't go to a vending machine until you want something. You don't check to see if your spare tire in your truck is good until you need it, right? I got news for you. You need to be ready all the time. In fact, the Bible's really clear on that. Being ready in season, out of season. Be sure your lamps are full. Be ready. Because we don't know what Jesus, Jesus said. I'm going to fair place. And if I go, I'm going to come again, right? Yeah. And when I come again, then the judgment. There's a lot of mistress, mistress, uh, street, uh whatever the word is, misunderstanding of even that. Because some people, some thoughts will say, when I die, I see judgment. I'm not sure I agree with that because I don't believe I see that in the Bible. Because Jesus said, when I come, then the judgment. So where do we go? Well, I can't answer that either. But I can't tell you this. We only understand time as we understand time. And God doesn't have the same understanding of time that you and I do. So yes, when you die, there's no more time. So when you die, it is the judgment. Because we don't know if Jesus is coming next week, tomorrow, this afternoon, or 25 years from now. Nobody knows. In fact, the Bible says... Not even the angels in heaven know when Christ is coming again. Yeah. It also says that Jesus doesn't even know when Jesus is coming again. The text is very clear that says only God himself knows when Jesus is coming again. Amen. So we're looking at this birth. We're looking at this. We're looking at this Christmas season today through the eyes of those shepherds. They were not the low lowlifes. They were not the low in society. More than likely, these men were actually priests. You know what that said to them? You know why I believe you went there? Because what was their task? To keep the lambs ready for sacrifice. And the angel comes to the very men, the shepherds that that that's their sole duty to protect these lambs, to prepare these lambs, to have these lambs with no blemish and ready for sacrifice. And the angel says, hey, fellas, we're about to put an end to that. Because soon and very soon, we ain't going to have no more lambs being sacrificed. Because the ultimate lamb of God is right here. That's pretty cool, isn't it? They ran to see Jesus. <laughs> And it said when they left, they left rejoicing. How could we not be 
rejoicing about the Christmas season. How can we not be rejoicing about the gift that God gave to us, his son Jesus, right? You know, we at Christmas have these, right? This is only a gift if I give it away, right? If I keep this gift, you ain't getting this gift. Mm, no, sir. It's fine. You ain't getting it. I bought it for me. I wouldn't be giving a gift, would it? I'd be kind of a selfish giver, I'd say. But when we give a gift, a gift is a gift only when it's given away. You get that? You tracking with me? Yeah. This gift is only a gift when it's given away. This gift is only a gift when it's given away. God gave it away, did he not? Yeah. God gave the gift. And now if you've been received, if you've received the gift, what should you do with that gift? You've been given the gift of the of Jesus, the 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 sacrificial Lamb of God. You've been given that gift. All of us have an opportunity to receive that gift. Now, what are you going to do with your gift? Are you going to are you going to harbor your gift and go, man, this is my Jesus, and you ain't getting none of it, right? You know, there's people like that. Sadly, there's preachers like that. I'm going to tell you what you want to hear, but I'm never going to tell you what this really says. That's not sharing the truth, is it? Jesus gave us that gift. He says, I want you to give it. I want you to give it away. I want you to share it. What he's saying here and what we should see in the Christmas season is we have received a gift. And we need to give that gift to everybody that we can. What that means is we're going to share Jesus with everybody we can. Monica, my sister right here, said to me one day, she says, I just love your Jesus. And I said, well, Monica, my Jesus is your Jesus. Is that not right? When people see us, we want them to see Jesus. Where's my sweet lady that makes a great banana pudding? I saw her right there. Whoa. You ever ate that? Mm, she's from the South. <laughs> if you if you bring some banana pudding today, Oh, sweet sister, you and I are going to slip out back. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you find me afterwards, we're going to get that pot out of here. Right? <laughs> Some eyes on you. <laughs> I don't even know where I was going with that. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that, really. Monica. Monica. She said that. She said, I just love your Jesus. My, now I know where I'm going. My sweet banana pudding sister back there. Mm. She said, I just love this church. And I walk in here and I instantly feel the Spirit of God. That ain't because of me. That's because of you. But ultimately, it's because of this. We have a gift. You have a gift. What are you going to do with your gift this season? You're going to keep it under the tree? You're going to keep it for yourself? Or you're going to give it to somebody else? Because you never, you, we don't know. We have no way of knowing what somebody else might be struggling with. But I assure you, all of us, including me, the dancing chicken is struggling with something. Are you with me on that? But this gift is amazing. Miss <laughs> Kate, work your way back up. I need to close right here. I don't know how I can say this. <clears throat> Any different. I want you to look around this room this morning. Our count was correct. We set a new record today. I think it's still 80. We started this church on April the 18th. We prayed about it for years before it actually happened. And I told our initial core group when we started, this is not about me. This is not about the cowboy. It is a cowboy church and we do things through Western culture. We do things through a cowboy way, but that's only a tool. That's only a tool to share Jesus. And I told you back then, 
that if we'll keep our eyes focused on Jesus, he'll bless this church in ways that you cannot even imagine. And he has, and he is, and he will continue to do so. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. This season, this, this time of year, as you, as you go through this week, and you share time with friends and with family, and you discuss and, and, and talk about the birth of Christ, maybe today I've helped you to see it through a different angle. From an angle of a unblemished lamb, from the angle of a sacrificial lamb, from the angle of the eyes of a shepherd who would have known because they, if they were temple priests, they would have known about the Christ. They would have known about the Savior. They would have known about the Messiah. So when the angel said today, I bring good news of great joy, they knew without a doubt what he was talking about. Did he not? Did they not? And that's why they got so excited and ran. They dropped everything. They left the sheep in the field and ran the town to see Jesus himself. I want you to see Jesus this week. I want you to see Jesus on your brother and your sister. I want, you to, I want people to see Jesus in you. That's the greatest gift that I could ever present to you from God himself through Jesus Christ. The gift of our Savior, Jesus. Let's all stand as Miss Kate sings us out.
If the world could have seen what the animals had witnessed, if only mankind is ready to change more than all that the world, we would bow down to worship. God's precious gift has come as a baby. Amen. When these shepherds saw Jesus, when they really saw Jesus, their lives were changed forever. When you finally see Jesus, your life will also change forever Amen. Amen. GT, we're going to pray out but we're also going to pray for a meal so we can go from here to our meal we we want to encourage all of you to stay even if you didn't bring anything we always have so much food it's crazy please stay please stay in fellowship with us as a family of believers and know this you've been given a gift the greatest gift that could ever be given to you, you've been, it's already been given. Jesus paid your entry fees. Jesus is there for us. And as these shepherds' lives were changed forever, when you see Jesus, your life will change forever as well. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we stand in awe and rejoice at the greatest gift you could ever give. From his birth and his life, his perfect example, his death, his resurrection, and his teaching to all of us. Let it touch our hearts to the core. Lord, we thank you for this food that we're about to enjoy, the hands that prepared it. Help us to always realize that everything comes from you. We ask this all in the name of our precious Savior. Amen. 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 All right. Woo! Banana pudding. Come on. <laughs> 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 oh.